Hello and welcome to another Raggies Beers, Wines and Spirits review. Tonight I'm going to be reviewing uh, one from Guinness and their West Indies Porter. Um, and this is from their Brewer's Source 1801, um, whatever that means. So it's 6% volume, a group of enterprising brewers on a quest to explore new recipes uh, reinterpret old ones and collaborate freely to bring exciting beers to life. With origins in the 1801 entry in our Brewer's Diaries, Guinness West Indies Porter is a complex yet mellow hoppy with notes of toffee and chocolate. Sounds lovely. So, without further ado, let's get the pour on. So straight away, obviously, dark colour coming out, ebony colour, and a very dark head as well. And what could it, I mean, that is a deep, dark tan head. Definite notes of chocolate in this in the aroma. Not really powerful aroma though. I shouldn't be having to do that, you know. Some you, some you get, you get, get near and you can smell it. So, so the aroma is not as good as I was, I would have anticipated. Certainly the colour. Look at that. Near enough black. Can't see any lacing or carbonation, so can't tell you anything about that. Wow, that is nice. Um, definitely roasted chocolate and coffee. Um, did it say hops? Toffee and chocolate, hoppy. Mm. It's nice. That is very nice. I only started drinking Guinness ooh, five or six years ago. Uh, wife bought a bottle. Uh, she was going to use it for cooking or something, and uh, she never did. Never got around to doing it. So I thought, oh well, waste not, want not. I drink it, and uh, you know, you drink something new, got a bit of a taste for it. And now when I go out to pubs, if there's no real ales, then Guinness is the port to call. You know, oh. Tastes a lot stronger than a normal six percenter. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd say it was six and a half to seven percent. Um, lovely, strong, very lovely a colour to it. Oh, some proper nice strength as well. So, we'll give it a quick look. See if I can bring any reviews up. See what other people think of it. That's if I can get this uh, mobile phone to play ball. So tonight, um, I'm having a clean up of the bedroom, uh, sorting out my stuff, and then you know sorting out the TV stuff. That's my area. Um, the wife's area is all her clothes. She leaves scattered about. And I comes, I looks in the video. Press the eject on the video, and out VHS video. This is, and out pops our wedding video, and uh, I've been searching for this video for well over a year. Thought we'd lost it, you know. It's, it's I've been married twenty years this year, and uh, you know some things in life are invaluable. You know, it's a priceless item. This video. It's also got a flood on as well, which is also a really good film. But, uh, you know, the half an hour of video of my wedding, you know, and uh, I've managed to get it. So I got it, I got it. Uh, it, it, it showed up, but it, it you could hear the voices, but you couldn't tell, they see the 
screen. So I've got another video player out the shed, brought it in, put the video in, bloody thing chewed the videotape and I'm like, fucking hell. So pressing the button to eject, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm really fuming at this time. Got it to eject. You could see where it chewed the video. So I'm having to press the button at the bottom, get it back in. Pray to God it's not done on an important part. I've got the other video working using the old coaxial cable. And uh, as luck would have it, I've managed to record all 32 minutes of my uh, wedding. And I've had to upload it to the Bear channel. So apologies if you do see. Uh, a wedding there. I mean, if you want to look, you can look. You know, I'm obviously a lot younger there, 20 years ago. You know, yeah, yeah. Certainly received an airline then, funnily enough. You know, back in my late 20s. But uh, in any case, it's you know, it's great to um, reminisce. You know, and see my mum, grandma, wife's grandma, all who sadly passed away in, in recent years. So anyway, before I start bucketing, and uh, you can reminisce too much at times. Um, so it's got a 3.45 out of 5 rating at ratebeer.com from 551 ratings. Um, oh my god, there's a lot of blurb there. So we'll go down to the ratings. Uh, very dark red brown, thin brown head, burnt toast aroma. Mild carb with some fresh coffee and hops tones. Lighter than expected, solid enough. I don't think it's lighter. I mean, it's not as it's not as thick as Guinness. And yet Guinness is only about 4%, 4.5%, you know, which is weird. Um, clear dark chestnut brown, film of dense beige head, fairly leggy. Nose has a licorice root, tar, leather. Dark malt, some coffee, taste is a little sweet with a hefty dose of roast malt and coffee grind bitterness. Medium body, low carbonation, quite rich and oily. Long roast bitterness to finish, tasty porter. A real coffee malt base with hints of vanilla, a nice round of bitterness. For me, this is one of Guinness' best offering. And finally, pours a nice head with a fairly creamy texture. The somewhat restrained nose, and it is restrained. It's not as I, the note on the aroma. It's not as powerful as I thought it would be. Uh, is malty with some rum mixed in, but fairly little initial roastiness. There's also an element that reminds me of a pilsner smell. Overall, the aroma is okay up to this point, albeit not outstanding. Next, you get sweetness, sourness and bitterness in seemingly equal quantities on the tongue. Sounds nicely balanced, but tastes a bit chop chewy to me. Chop suey, rather. Uh, the finish comes with m without much aroma at all. Only the relatively high ABV saves that final impression from being a thin one. Let it approach room temperature and this beer begins to taste more pleasant. Good enough, but still not great. So, somebody's review, you know. We've all got our own reviews of everything. Yeah, I'll just make sure there's none left in the bottle. So, I find it an improvement on the original Guinness. Well, not quite as thick as the original Guinness, if you understand, you know, the thickness, uh, what I'm trying to get at. Um, but saying that, wow, that the the burnt, the toasted aromas, you know, they really the roasted, toasted, you know, that sort of thing. They really do come through well. And I'm drinking this at room temperature. Uh, fine, you know, thankfully, not in the bare room at the moment, uh, and it's, you know, it's really pleasant at that temperature. Oh, so out of five, hmm, 
a really good, strong effort, I think. Um, would I drink it again? Hell yes. Um, it does taste stronger than the 6% ABV implies, you know. Um, it's really nice. I wouldn't say it's a top 10 beer, but it's very, very close. So, for me, I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5. Yeah, really nice. Really liked it. And, uh, all pleased I tried it. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.